Now in this video we are continue with the periodicity in properties of elements. So we are going to discuss the next two properties that is ionization enthalpy and electron gain enthalpy. Let us first discuss about ionization enthalpy. Ionization enthalpy is denoted as delta H. Delta H is the enthalpy change. Delta stands for change and enthalpy means it is heat. So, change in heat energy that is called enthalpy. So, delta H is enthalpy change and it is ionization enthalpy. So, that is denoted as delta H I. So, this is the uh, how we denote ionization enthalpy. Now, what do you mean by ionization enthalpy? The amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron from an isolated gaseous atom that is ionization enthalpy. So, we can say it is the amount of energy required to remove. So, we can write it as to an atom if we give energy what will happen the most loosely bound electron the electron which is held most loosely will be ejected out. So, we can say atom plus energy and we know when an atom loses electron we get a positive ion. So, we get a positive ion plus electron is removed. Now, let us see the variation of ionization enthalpy down the group and across the period. So, next variation of ionization enthalpy or delta H i down the group. Now, down the group we know that the size of the atom increases and we know the size of the atom increases because the outermost electrons are loosely held by the nucleus or we can say effective nuclear charge decreases size of the atom increases. So, as the outermost electrons are loosely bound as we move down the group we need only less amount of energy to remove that outermost electron because it is already loosely bound with the nucleus. So, we can say ionization enthalpy decreases down the group due to increase in atomic radii. So, down the group delta H i decreases and we know group 1 elements uh, in the periodic table group 1 elements they have the maximum atomic radii. So, group 1 elements will need very less amount of ionization enthalpy to remove the most loosely bound outermost electron. And next comes group 2. Okay. Now, let us see how does ionization enthalpy vary across the period. So, across the period across the period we know size of the atom decreases which means the electrons are strongly held by the nucleus. They are under strong force of attraction with the nucleus. So, we know more amount of energy we have to give to remove the outermost electron which means we need higher ionization enthalpy. So, across the period ionization enthalpy increases. So, across the period we can say delta H i increases. Okay. And we know if you go to group 17, 18, 18 has completely filled orbital. So, it is very difficult to remove that outermost electron from noble gases. So, the highest ionization enthalpy is for group 18 elements and the lowest ionization enthalpy is for group 1 elements. Now, next I am going to discuss one question.
the question is this delta h 3i greater than delta h 2i greater than delta h 1i explain this order now what do you mean by delta h 1i delta h 2i delta h 3i delta h 1i delta h i is the ionization enthalpy delta h 1i means it is the first ionization enthalpy so what will be delta h 2i second ionization enthalpy and delta h 3i is the third ionization enthalpy now what do you mean by first ionization enthalpy first ionization enthalpy means the energy required to remove the first most loosely bound electron from an atom and what do you mean by second ionization enthalpy the ionization enthalpy required to remove the second loosely bound electron from an atom so the question is uh, delta h 3 i greater which means to remove the third electron from an atom we need high amount of energy then to remove second electron then to remove first electron what is the reason that is because you know the first electron is always removed from a neutral atom whereas when you remove one electron from a neutral atom we get a positively charged ion so the second electron has to be removed from a unipositive ion which means more amount of energy has to be provided now after removing two electrons the third electron has to be removed from an ion which has two positive charges which means more and more amount of energy has to be removed so always first ionization enthalpy is lower than second than third so uh, what is the reason because uh, in first uh, delta h 1 i the electron has to be removed from a neutral atom so energy required is less whereas in delta h 2 i the second electron is removed from a unipositive ion so high energy is required i will give an example aluminium <coughs> suppose you uh, give energy you know aluminium it has three valence electrons and if you give energy aluminium will first lose one electron and it becomes a l plus plus electron now the delta h 1 i this is delta h 1 i because this is the energy given to remove the first electron from aluminium is 577 kilojoule per mole now second electron i will remove from a l plus so a l plus from Al plus I am removing one more electron means it becomes Al2 plus plus one electron is removed. Now for this we have the second ionization enthalpy whose value is little more higher that is 1795 kilojoule per mole. Now one more electron we have in aluminium valence electron so again I have to remove that third electron from Al2 plus. Now Al2 plus if I remove one more electron I get Al3 plus plus electron. Now here the third ionization enthalpy will be very high. It is 275 or 85 kilojoule per mole. So you can always say delta H1 i is less than delta H2 i less than delta H3 i. And what is the unit of ionization enthalpy? The unit of ionization enthalpy is kilojoule per mole unit of delta h i is kilojoule per mole. Now next let us see the factors affecting ionization enthalpy. 1 nuclear charge. So factors affecting ionization enthalpy first one is nuclear charge. You know that as nuclear charge increases, ionization enthalpy increases. Nuclear charge increases means there is a strong force of attraction between the nucleus and outermost electron. So high amount of energy is required to remove that electron which means ionization enthalpy increases. So as nuclear charge increases, delta HI increases. Now the second factor is size of the atom, size of atom, 
which we have already discussed you know that as size of atom increases ionization enthalpy decreases as size of atom decreases ionization enthalpy increases now the third factor is screening effect of inner electrons screening effect now if the screening effect is very high by the inner electrons on the outer electrons very high means what that outer electrons are less attracted by the nucleus now in that case the ionization enthalpy will be less or we can say as screening effect increases ionization enthalpy decreases so screening effect increases delta h i decreases now next last factor we not last number 4 is penetration effect of electrons penetration effect of electrons now we already discussed the penetrating effect of electron is s electron greater than p greater than d greater than f so we know that s electron will be closer to the nucleus than p than d than f so what happens it's very difficult to remove an electron from s orbital so we can say uh, the ionization enthalpy will be more for s electron than for p than for d than for f now the last factor is number 5 is half filled and completely filled orbitals effect of half filled and completely filled orbitals now you know that completely filled and half filled orbitals are extra stability so due to their extra stability their ionization enthalpy is also very high or we can say it's very difficult to remove electrons from half filled and completely filled orbitals so these are the five factors that affect ionization enthalpy now next we will do few questions the first question is delta h1 i of aluminum is lower than magnesium delta h1 i of magnesium so always when you get a question based on ionization enthalpy you should write the electronic configuration of the elements so let's write the electronic configuration of aluminum and magnesium aluminum you know atomic number 13 the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p1 now magnesium the atomic number of magnesium is 12 configuration will be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 now the question is delta h1 i of aluminum is lower which means in aluminum the outermost electron is present in 3p orbital whereas in magnesium it is present in 3s orbital so it's easy to remove electron from 3p orbital of aluminum what is the reason so delta h1 i of aluminum is lower because you know in uh, magnesium the electron has to be removed from completely filled 3s orbital completely filled and also you know the penetrating effect uh, is greater for s electron so it is difficult to remove electron from uh, magnesium so delta h1 i of aluminum is lower than that for magnesium now the next question is nitrogen has quest number 2 nitrogen has higher delta h1 i than oxygen so again we have to write the electronic configuration now nitrogen what is the electronic configuration of nitrogen nitrogen is 1s2 2s2 2p3 and oxygen atomic number 8 the configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p4 now nitrogen has higher delta h1i than oxygen we know that look at nitrogen nitrogen has exactly half filled 2p orbital okay and we know the 
uh, ionization enthalpy required to remove electron from half filled orbital is very high. Now, whereas in oxygen, we have in 2p orbital 4 electrons. So, what is there in oxygen? Since there are 4 electrons, there is inter electronic repulsion in the 2p orbital of oxygen. Inter electronic repulsion in the 2p orbital of oxygen. So, uh, since there is repulsion, uh, what happens? It is easy to remove the electron. So, the ionization enthalpy of nitrogen is greater than that of oxygen. Now, uh, next we have another question. Quiz number 3. Noble gases has the highest ionization enthalpy in the respective periods because you know the electronic configuration of noble gas is ns2 np6 so you know the electron has to be removed from completely filled p orbital so very high ionization enthalpy is required so uh, they have extra stability due to completely filled uh, p orbital so high ionization enthalpy so, with this we complete the property that is ionization enthalpy. Now, the next property is electron gain enthalpy. Electron gain enthalpy. Electron gain enthalpy is denoted as delta H E G. Electron gain enthalpy. Now, I will give the definition of electron gain enthalpy. It is the amount of energy released when an isolated gaseous atom accepts an electron to form a gaseous anion. So, electron gain enthalpy means electron is gained that time energy is released. Okay. So, we can write that as atom when it gains electron you know an atom and it gains electron we get an anion negatively charged ion anion plus energy is released here okay now since it is the energy released we have electron gain enthalpy delta h is the enthalpy change eg denotes electron gain enthalpy so electron gain enthalpy values are always negative because it is the energy released ok now the unit of electron gain enthalpy unit is same as ionization enthalpy that is kilojoule per mole now let us see the variation of electron gain enthalpy down the group and across the period so next variation variation of delta H E G First, let us see down the group. Now, down the group, you know, size of the atom increases. So, electron gain enthalpy becomes less and less negative. Okay, because the electron added will be further away from the nucleus because size is very big. So, down the group electron gain enthalpy value becomes less and less negative. Now, let us see the variation across the period. So, down the group delta H E G is less negative. Now, let us see across the period. Now, here when you move along the period, you can see the electron gain enthalpy becomes more and more negative because the size of the atom uh, decreases. So, the defective increases and you know when the size of the atom is small, it is very easy to add electrons. Okay. So, uh, along the period, delta H E G becomes more negative. So, you can see. Group 1 elements has 
less negative electron gain enthalpy whereas you take group 17 elements they are elements with maximum negative electron gain enthalpy because they are very small size and it's easy to add electron to a small atom now let's see few questions based on electron gain enthalpy the first question is electron gain enthalpy of noble gases is positive why you know that the electronic configuration of noble gases is ns2 np6 so they have completely filled uh, orbitals so we know addition of electrons means when they gain electron it is difficult for them to gain electron but they gain electron only if we give them more amount of energy so energy has to be supplied for that electron to add to a next higher energy level so we can say in this case the electron gain enthalpy value is positive now the next question a very important question delta h e g of oxygen is less negative compared to sulfur or you can say first i will discuss this question now the question is delta h e g of oxygen is less negative compared to sulfur now if you look at the periodic table you can see oxygen and sulfur is in group number 16 and they are in the same group and you know down the group electron gain enthalpy value becomes less negative which means who should have more negative delta h e g oxygen but what is our question this is an exceptional case the question is delta h e g of oxygen is less negative compared to sulfur now what is the reason for this the reason is you know that the oxygen has a very small atomic size and what is the electronic configuration of oxygen atomic number 8 configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p4 now uh what happens is due to the small size of oxygen atom there is interelectronic repulsion in the 2p orbital of oxygen so addition of electron is not very easy so what happens uh the delta h e g value becomes less negative but down the group you know n value increases so uh the electron have more space to enter and there is less interelectronic repulsion so the reason for this is oxygen because of its small size has uh, more interelectronic repulsion in the small 2p orbital which makes the incoming electron to enter with difficulty so the delta h e g of oxygen is less negative compared to sulfur now the same question we can apply to group 17 also that is delta h e g of fluorine is less negative compared to chlorine now you know fluorine and chlorine they belong to same group so actually fluorine should have the most negative delta h e g but chlorine has more negative delta h e g than fluorine now what is the reason again when you write the electronic configuration fluorine has atomic number 9 the configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p5 so what happens fluorine because of its small size there is interelectronic repulsion in the 2p orbital so the electron cannot enter easily which means delta h e g of fluorine is less negative now you can say in the periodic table uh, chlorine has the maximum negative electron gain enthalpy okay now let's see the next question the next question is halogens they have halogens have the most negative delta h e g why because the electronic configuration of halogen is ns2 np5 
so 5 plus 2 7 electrons they need only one more electron to attain noble gas configuration so they readily accept one electron so they have the most negative electron gain enthalpy now next uh, but among halogens who has the uh, most negative chlorine only after chlorine we have fluorine with negative electron gain enthalpy so these are the uh, questions based on electron gain enthalpy so with this we complete two properties that is ionization enthalpy and electron gain enthalpy and its variation thank you